And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 1.29 Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a different version of a, just a classic chicken cordon bleu, but we're going to kind of change it up a little bit. Now, we've made the traditional fried chicken cordon bleu on this program before, but this one is much easier. It's a quicker dish, and we're going to Florentine it. What that means, anytime that you see the word Florentine in the title of a dish, automatically know it has spinach in it because that's what Florentine means. So this is going to be a quick Chicken Florentine Cordon Bleu, which is scrumptiously delicious. This is the perfect, perfect dish to make for a special occasion, maybe a holiday meal for your family, or really, truly, just any time you want to make it. It is that easy, but it's special enough. It looks fantastically special, and, and, and that way you could serve it to a special guest. Now, I've got my oven preheated to 300 and 75 degrees. I've got a couple of tablespoons of butter that I have melted in this pot, and we're going to use that in just a minute. I have a large skillet over here. Matter of fact, let me move that off the eye because that's hot. I've got a large skillet that I'm preheating over medium-high heat, and I'm going to add, oh, about three tablespoons or so of, I'm using uh, olive oil, but if you want to use canola oil, or vegetable oil, that's fine. I just happen to have the olive oil right there. And I tend to cook a lot with olive oil, but you can use canola oil or vegetable oil or what, peanut oil if you wanted to. Peanut oil will add a little bit of flavor, but whatever you have on hand, you wanna get that kind of hot. In this pan, I have, I'm using six boneless, skinless chicken breasts because my dish will serve six people. But if you want to serve four, you know, you can do this with just four. It, 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 it's up to you. Uh, but I have six boneless, skinless, beautiful chicken breasts. And I'm going to season the one side first with salt and pepper. Always use fresh ground pepper. And in my recipes, unless I specifically state, now this is not true for every recipe out there, but in mine, if you're doing my recipes, when I say salt, I mean kosher salt. If you are using regular iodized table salt that you, you know, you buy and you put in the little salt shaker that you use, because kosher won't come out of a salt shaker, you want to use half the amount. So if I call for a tablespoon, you want to use half a tablespoon. If I call for a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, if you're using regular iodized salt. I always use kosher salt. Sometimes when I'm baking, I use regular salt, but typically I use kosher. So if you're doing my recipe, remember it is kosher salt. We've got our skillet here, medium-high heat. All I want to do is brown these chicken breasts, and these are beautiful. And they are huge. I'm just going to brown the one side, season it, and then turn it over to the other side. My tongs don't want to cooperate with me here. Now, my chicken breast, this little flap of meat right here is called the rib meat. You can cut that off if you want to, but I like it. Well, you know, I said there were six. There's just five in here. Huh. Thought there were six. Oh well, we'll do it with five, it's fine. So get your chicken in there. Remember anytime you're working with raw poultry to make sure that you don't put that on your cutting board, that you have a special board for that so that the raw poultry, and I didn't touch it with my hands, so we're good to go. Anything that touches raw poultry, remember you have to wash immediately. Season the other side, same thing, salt and pepper. I love chicken, so versatile. You can do it in so many different ways. This will take about three minutes or so on either side. In the meantime, while that's doing its thing, in this pan right here, a small saucepan, you want to heat up just to barely to a simmer. Get the right eye would help. 
one cup of half and half, a half a cup of chicken broth, and I'm using dried thyme today because I didn't have any fresh. If you have fresh thyme, you can use fresh thyme. Uh, I'm using about a teaspoon. If you were using fresh, you'd want about a tablespoon. Dried is always much more potent than your fresh, but whatever you have is fine. Want to bring this up to a simmer. Get a little bit bigger spoon. Let me just grab one of my little wooden spoons here. Because this is going to be poured down around the chicken when we bake it. Make it delicious. Mm. Absolutely scrumptious. Anything with half and half a cream automatically, you know, is going to be good. Now, I have one small box, the little small box of frozen chopped spinach that I have defrosted in the microwave and just, um, you know, you can put it in a kitchen towel and wring out the excess liquid. I just put it in my hands and just squeeze it over the garbage bowl or the trash can or the sink or whatever, wherever you are. Uh, and you want to get out as much of the extra moisture as you possibly can. Let me show you how to do it with a kitchen towel if you've got, if you want to do that. Just use a clean kitchen towel. Put your spinach in there. Kind of get it down in there. What you want to do is wring out the extra moisture because we don't want that in our final dish. It'll make it too watery. I've already kind of squeezed a little bit of this, but you can feel the moisture and you can see it. See how it's coming through the towel? See all that coming out? You want to get all of that extra moisture. Let your kids do this. They'll think this is cool. You want to get all of that extra water out of there, all that you can. Squeeze it as dry as you possibly can. If you have a problem with your hands, maybe you've got a little arthritis or something and you can't really squeeze like this, you can put it in a strainer and then take a fine mesh, uh, a fine mesh sieve and then take a spoon and press on it. That'll work too, either way. And there you go, just a little bowl or a little pile of just thawed out spinach. One of the greatest bargains, I think, in the grocery store because that, in fresh terms, is a good two bags of spinach. So we're just going to kind of set that to the side. Let me put it back in the bowl. I poured out the liquid. Just kind of set that to the side. Let that kind of hang out. Let's check our chicken. You just want to brown it. We're not cooking it through. We're just browning. And there you go. You see how that just do the other side. Mm. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees. These are big chicken breasts. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Now my cream is up to a, a simmer. You just kind of want to warm that through. You're not really trying to do anything with it except heat it through. Now, to go on top of this, I am using just regular uh, sliced ham that you buy in the grocery store, just sliced ham right out of the package, and some Swiss cheese. And when I come back, I'm going to show you how to get this put together and get it in the oven, and then we're going to start on a side dish of sugar snap peas. I'll be right back with you in just a minute. the stark differences between summer and winter to show His majesty and His glory in change. He does the same thing in our lives. He causes change to come so that we can appreciate more fully His majesty in our growth, in our changes as His children. So next time that you're going through a change in your life, realize that God has ordained that. God has created it so that you can fully see His growth and His majesty through you. Hey, I 
and welcome back. Now we're gonna get our chicken going. I have one sleeve of crackers and I'm using just a really buttery cracker, the kind that you buy in the grocery store. I don't call any brand names, but you all know what these are. Everybody knows what kind of cracker this is. But any kind of just a, a, a good buttery cracker that you wanna use. I make another dish that we coat. I think we've done that on here before. Maybe we have, maybe we have, I don't remember. Need to check, but anyway, we'll make it if we haven't. That I use these crackers and oh, it's just so good. But you want about a sleeve of it. You want about a cup of breadcrumbs. So however much, or not breadcrumbs, but cracker crumbs. However much that you think you need. I've got five really good sized chicken breasts there. So I think this will probably be plenty. You want all total about a cup. Just crunch them up with your hands. Again, a great job for your kids to do. Get them to wash their hands and get them into the kitchen with you. You know, one of my favorite things since we started this program, and really one of the goals of Everyday Manna, truthfully, one of the big goals is to get your kids in the kitchen. Make it a family affair. Make it fun with you. And a lot of you have seen my boys on here. My boys love to help me cook. And we cook at home all the time. But one of the greatest comments that I've had from this show is parents who email me or call, you know, write me a letter and they will say, you know, I'm cooking with my children and oh, we're having so much fun and I love to hear stories like that. So this is a great recipe to get your kids in the kitchen with you. I have a nine by 13 inch baking dish. If you have the glass dish, that's fine. We're gonna transfer our chicken into the dish. This chicken is not cooked through, remember. I told you, we're not cooking it through at this point. All we're doing is just browning the chicken. Kind of get them, nestle them in there however you need to get them in there. Whoops, come on, chicken. Slippery little guys today. Oh, look how good. Turn him off. And you're going to go on the side, mister. That's perfectly fine, isn't it? All righty. Now, you want to get them in there. Nestle them in your pan. Get that off the heat. That's popping and making a mess. Turn your cream off. Don't need that anymore. Now, we are going to make this the cordon bleu with the Florentine touch. We're going to use some Dijon mustard. I'm not a big mustard fan, like on sandwiches and stuff, but in this recipe, this really works. You want to just put just a little teeny bit of mustard on top of it. If you don't want to use the, I'm using Dijon, you don't have to. You can leave it out. It, it does add another layer of flavor, but it's not essential to the dish. I, I do want to encourage you to try it, though. Like I said, I'm not a real big mustard fan, but I love it on this, in this dish. As an ingredient in something, I tend to use it more. I'm using Dijon because that adds so much more flavor. Oops, wait a minute, getting ahead of myself. Take your spinach that you thawed and that you wring out with your hands. This is the time for the hands, folks. Your best tools are your hands. Place a little bit of your spinach over top of your dish. This would be a wonderful dish to make for Easter dinner. If you don't want to do the traditional ham, maybe you don't eat ham. You could leave out the ham in this recipe and just bake it without the sliced ham, or you could include it in, as an alternative to a baked ham. Maybe you've got a small family and you don't need a huge baked ham. This would be a wonderful dinner for you know any special occasion, Easter or um, Christmas or anything, really. I mean, this is just a versatile meal or any day of the week. It doesn't have to be a holiday. I like spinach, so I add a lot because I love spinach. It's healthy and it's so good for you. And it tastes so very, very good. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Then on top of the spinach, we are going to place just, like I said, just a slice of ham that you buy in the in the, you know, the pre-sliced meats, or you can have your deli slice it, whichever you like. Whatever kind of lunch meat ham type ham that you like. If you've got, if you've baked a ham and you've got leftover ham, that would be great with this recipe. Remember the chicken cordon bleu has ham rolled up on the inside, ham and cheese. 
we're doing an easier version that I think is so elegant and pretty. Then one slice of Swiss cheese. You could use Fontina. You could use, um, I probably wouldn't use cheddar, it's a little strong. You could use the, uh, the Swiss cheese like I'm using. Uh, a a Havarti, I'll get it out in a minute. A Havarti cheese would be delicious on this too. Swiss cheese is easy to find, readily available. Take, remember the cream that we just brought to a simmer? You want to pour that around. Whoops, don't make a mess like I'm doing. Don't Be careful not to, um, you know, remove your toppings off of your, just gently pour that around the beautiful chicken. Then take your crumbs, your cracker crumbs that we just made, put a little pile on each, press it down into the chicken. Now that cream is going to make a delicious sauce. That's the point of that cream. Oh, want a 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on the thickness of your chicken breast. Chicken, you want to make sure it's cooked all the way through. If you use a meat thermometer, it needs to be at least 160 at bare minimum. I like my chicken to about 170 to 180, but 160 is considered safe. And that's it, folks. Now, how easy is that? You can do that with your family, and it, it's absolutely delicious. 375 degree oven, about 20, these are thick, so I'm gonna go probably 25 minutes on that. I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna get this in the oven. When I come back, we're gonna make our snap peas and our carrot salad. I'll be right back with you in just a second. Welcome back. Now, I forgot to mention to you that we, before, when you put your chicken in the oven, those two tablespoons or so of butter that we melted, you want to pour that over the top of it before you put it in the oven. So I did that over the break. So make sure before you put it in the oven, you drizzle that melted butter on top. Be delicious like that. All right, on the stove top, I have a skillet that I'm going to add about a teaspoon of, I'm using olive oil. Uh, you can use, you know, any kind of oil that you have is fine. These are, if you've never had these, these are sugar snap peas. Now, I find, especially in the springtime, I can find these fresh quite often. If you cannot find these fresh and they're in your, in your dairy department, the whole thing is edible. Um, you know how peas, you have to shell the pea out of there. These are sugar snap peas, and the whole entire pod is edible. Uh, if you cannot find them fresh, you can buy, you can find them frozen anytime, and you can use the frozen kind. Just thaw them out, like run them under hot water to thaw them out, and then dry them a little, you know, with a, just a paper towel. That's fine, too. They're delicious, fresh or frozen. So either way will work. Now my pan, the oil is hot. I'm gonna add, this is about a, I don't know, a one pound package of the sugar snap peas. Just add them in there. This is just a quick little side dish. Sprinkle it with about a teaspoon of kosher salt and some pepper. And we wanna let these go a couple of minutes just to kind of start sauteing a little bit. We're actually gonna end up, I guess you would call it a braise on this because we're actually going to uh, add a little bit of liquid to that and let it steam through with the liquid on top of it. So those are going to go. While that's working, we are going to make a quick little easy side dish. First of all, I'm going to zest a lemon. Just using your little microplane, one of the handiest tools ever made for a kitchen. Love them, have lots of different ones, different size holes and different things. Use my rasps as they're called or microplanes all the time. And I, you can find them anywhere now. You used to could only get them really in a specialty kitchen shop, but now you can find them anywhere. One of the best tools I think in the kitchen. 
Always remember, we've talked about this before, it t sometimes it'll tend to stick on the back, so just tap it down. Roll the lemon on the counter with your hand. And let me find my lemon reamer. Cut the lemon in half. We're gonna juice that in just a second. In a bowl, this side dish could not be easier. Check your sugar peas. I bought in my grocery store just a package of pre-shredded up carrots. If you um, don't want to buy these, if you want to shred your own, just get about a pound of carrots and shred them yourself. But I like the convenience of this pre-shredded up stuff. This this salad, if you want to, it's it's really what it is. Just kind of a little salad. Could not be easier. A little great side dish. And this is perfect made ahead. You know, make it up ahead a little bit, and that way it has a chance to, the flavors have a chance to marry. Let's check our sugar snap peas real quick. Part of working in a kitchen is going back and forth between your dishes. Remember that. Aren't those beautiful? Look at that pretty green color. That green color on that just is beautiful. Oh, I love vegetables. They're so good and so good for you. Add a little salt to your carrots. Want to take our lemon and juice it into a bowl. Mm, I love lemon. Love the smell of it. Love the taste of it. Fresh lemon juice adds such a wonderful flavor to your food. And, I, you know, I've watched other chefs before, and I, I have to disagree with one comment I heard. I don't think you can substitute bottled lemon juice. A lot of people think you can. I even heard some chefs uh, say, you know, you can because it's a little less expensive. And, you know, hey, a lemon is, what, a quarter? Trust me, there's no comparison. I like fresh lemon juice. You could use lime juice in this, too, if you wanted to. Freshly ground pepper. Then, take your whisk, all-purpose vinaigrette, olive oil, whisk in about, I don't know, fourth of a cup or so of extra virgin olive oil. Pour it over your carrots. You could add some raisins if you wanted to. You could add some chopped up pineapple if you wanted to. Would be yummy if that's what you wanted to do. Let's turn those down. Now, let's stir up our carrot mixture. This particular dish would be perfect to take to a picnic because it doesn't have any mayonnaise in it. If you're looking for a quick little side dish to take to a picnic where you really don't have good refrigeration, absolutely take this dish because it doesn't require refrigeration. It doesn't have any mayonnaise in it. Take some parsley, some fresh green parsley, if I can get, there we go, chopped up. Oh, about half a cup or so of good fresh parsley. I like the flat leaf. I think it has more flavor. If you like the other, get the other, that's fine. Chop this up, however fine you like. I like to see what it is, so I don't really necessarily like mine too awfully fine. About half a cup, and that's it. Now, to our wonderful little snap peas, about half a cup of soy sauce. Turn that heat down. And some toasted sesame seeds, a couple of tablespoons, or regular sesame seeds. I just happen to have toasted ones. Turn the heat way down, cover them, let them go for about three to five minutes, and they'll be tender and succulent and look just like a fresh breath of spring. So that's the sugar snap peas. All right, now our chicken is done. And like I said, um, make sure that you drizzle those couple of tablespoons of melted butter over top. And this is not just beautiful. Now, absolutely, you know, if you, you could take this to the table as is, you know, use this as a serving dish. Beautiful and easy. I mean, this is a dish that you can make and you can do. Let me get my tongs here. Let's get us a serving of this out. This is a quick, easy, elegant chicken dish that you can make anytime you want. This baked for about 25 or 30 minutes.
and just slide that on your pretty plate. And then remember the gravy that we made. It makes its own sauce. And just take a little bit of that, the sauce out of the pan and drizzle over top of your wonderful little elegant meal. And there you go, the perfect, perfect meal Special enough for company, but you know, easy enough for any night of the week. We've got our Florentine chicken cordon bleu. We've got our wonderful little sugar snap peas that just sauteed in that pan for you know about five minutes or so. And then our delicious carrot salad that could not be easier. Just lemon juice and olive oil, salt and pepper, parsley and shredded up carrots. Just mixy a little salad that's perfect for a picnic because it doesn't contain any mayonnaise so it doesn't need any refrigeration. Hope you try these recipes and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.